In this series of videos, I shall give you an overview of the verb tenses in Spanish. I will be emphasising the patterns that they possess because some of you may have looked in a book of verbs and may feel intimidated by all the words associated with just one verb. Once you know the patterns, then there is a lot less to learn. I hope by pointing them out, your mind will register them when learning new verbs, which should make them easy to remember as they look familiar. There are lots of regular verbs which follow regular patterns, so you can guess all of the tenses without learning any exceptions. There are similar ones that sound regular, but with spelling changes in order to maintain certain sounds. When you read them or say them, you shouldn't need to think about it. It's only when you spell them that you need to work out the changes. For example, busca, busque, or paga, pague. Another change you may see is an accent mark to force the stress in the same place. For example, traído, from the verb traer, needs one to fit in with all the other words that have an ido sound, like salido or venido. The stress just means a longer sound, but not volume. Salido. Another thing to be aware of is that some verbs split a stress letter O into UE and some split a letter E into IE. For example, the O in contar, cuento, but contamos has a stress on a different letter. Another common one is tener, tiene, but tenemos has moved the stress away from that first letter E. There are irregular verbs, which are ones that break the rules. Many of them, unfortunately, are common verbs. And I will not be covering all of them in the video, as this will take far too much time. Although, even then, some of them can often use some sort of pattern. When saying anything in a foreign language, you should be aware of what you mean in English first, instead of reacting to certain key words. For example, if I said, when they were young, they would swim every day. This means when they were young, they used to swim every day. Some of you may immediately jump on the word would and think that you were talking about a condition when actually I would use what, what is called an imperfect tense in that particular example. Try to develop a feeling of what you mean, which is useful when selecting a past tense regardless of the words that you are using. This brings me on to another point. I don't believe you should focus on grammatical terms too much. I will be using them for people who want them, but it's more useful to be able to use a screwdriver rather than just knowing the word for one. It should be sufficient, at least initially, to have a feel for the type of word. I shall also be giving them more meaningful terms such as the had tense or the descriptions tense, which for me makes things easier to remember and understand. Before I start with the present tense, I just want to point out that, that although there are three verb endings, ar, er, and ir, I always think of them as either ar verbs or they are not. This is because there are endings in different tenses which have an a, so you can mentally group the a's together, which we will see in a moment. To form most tenses, you take the last two letters off the end of a verb and add your own endings. The stress on verbs with more than one syllable in the present tense is on the penultimate syllable, which means the syllable before last. For example, from the verb hablar, to speak, we have hablo, or hablamos. That has three syllables, hablamos. So the stress is on the penultimate one, hablamos, no matter how quickly you say it, hablamos. In the yo form of many verbs, the ending is o. Taking the verb hablar to speak, I speak will be hablo. The ber can mean should or to owe. I owe can be translated as debo. Decidir means to decide. I decide is decido. Some irregular verbs also end in a. Tengo or puedo. There are some exceptions. Doy, estoy and soy, amongst others. Don't get too used to that O ending in the yo form, as other tenses use other letters. You will note that the endings with an A belong to the AR verbs A, AS and AN. So using hablar, he, she, you speak is habla. The TO form, which is the familiar version of you, used to speak to children or to people with whom you are on familiar terms, is hablas. 
thing they or you all form is avlan. Deber and decidir are not AR verbs, so they take the other endings. Debe, decide, debes, decides, deben, deciden. Make a mental note of the endings s, n, and mos as these are used repeatedly in other tenses. The nosotros form is quite easy. Take the verb and replace the R with mos, which works for almost everything. Hablar, hablamos, comer, comemos, salir, salimos. It doesn't work for the verbs ser or ir, which are somos and vamos respectively, but there is always a mos ending for everything. The vosotros form, which is the familiar form of you all, which is used in Spain, is also quite easy. I don't learn it. I usually just work it out when I need it. For most words, I take whatever word I have ending in mos and change it to is without changing the position of the stress. Hablamos, habláis, comemos, coméis, salimos, salís. It also works for somos, sois, and for vamos, vais. The imperfect tense is what I would call a description tense. It is used to describe events without being clear about whether the event has finished or not. It can also be used to translate used to, as in I used to swim every day. It is a very easy tense to learn as there are only three verbs that have irregular changes. There are two main sounds to listen out for, aba for AR verbs and ia for the others. The ia endings are reused on another tense called the conditional tense, which I will talk about on another video. I have grouped the yo form with the el, ea, usted form to emphasize that the endings are the same. Also, the stress is always on the endings. El means he, ea means she, and usted means you, and is the polite form of that word. As you can see in both columns, the endings s, n, and mos are used again. This is a consistent theme. Let's practice with the verb limpiar, which means to clean. As it is an ar verb, I use the endings that start with an a. To say, I was cleaning, I can say limpiara. Also to say, he, she, you were cleaning, the word is still limpiara. The two form is limpiaras. They, you all were cleaning, is limpiaban. And we were cleaning is limpiaramos. For the vosotros form, I can still use that trick mentioned earlier. I replace the mos part with a is and keep the stress in the same place. Limpiabamos, limpiabais. Descender can mean to go down or to come down. It is not an AR verb, so I'll use the other endings. To say, I was going down the stairs, I can say, Descendía las escaleras. This also is the same for the el ea usted form. The other forms are descendías, descendíamos, and descendían. Again, for the vosotros form, I can change descendíamos to descendíais. Some examples. La pared era azul which means the wall was blue. As I am describing the state of the wall in the past, it does not mean it is still blue. Mi hermana era vegetariana, which means my sister was vegetarian. Cuando era joven, when I was young, me levantaba muy temprano, I used to get up very early. The preterite is for talking about an event that has a start and an end whether you stipulate a time or not. The event also isn't really related to the present. You are simply talking about an event in the past. The preterite can take a little time to learn as there are exceptions in common verbs. There are endings for AR verbs and endings for the others as usual, but there is what I would call a compromise for certain irregular verbs which take endings from both columns. Also, the stress for regular verbs goes on the endings, and the ones in the compromise column goes on the penultimate syllable. I shall start with the 
I form and the he, she, you form. There is a good way of remembering those from an excellent course that Michelle Thomas recorded. Actually, it's a, it's a nice cha-cha. A and O and E and Y. A and O, E and Y. A and O, you can sing it. A and O and E and Y. And you know something? You will never forget it. A and O and E and Y. A and O and E and Y. So for hablar, I spoke would be hablar. He, she, you spoke is hablar. For decidir, I decided is decidi. And for he, she, you decided is decidia. You can see that the rest of the AR verb endings again start with an A and the others do not. On the vosotros form, you cannot use that trick to form it, but what may help is that the two form used when talking to one person, aste and iste, has fewer letters than the vosotros form, asteis and isteis, which is used when talking to more than one person. Those endings have more letters, so you could think more letters, more people. Unfortunately, there are common verbs which use the endings in the compromise column. These take the I and he, she, you form from the AR verbs and the rest from the other column. They also have an irregular start. A good example is the verb estar. It starts with estu. Remember that the stress this time is on the penultimate syllable. I was is estuve. He, she, you were is estuvo. Those are the endings from the AR verbs. The rest are from the other column. Estuviste, estuvimos, estuvisteis, and estuvieron. You shouldn't get confused with the present tense as long as you make a mental association with the estuv sound and the past tense. There are two verbs that have very strange forms which are the same as each other. Ir, to go, and ser, to be. So, fui can mean I went or I was. I have grouped them like this in the hope that you can see the relationship between the singular forms and the plural forms. Starting with I went, if I said we were or we went, I could say fuimos, which is the plural version as it includes you as part of the group. Look at the he, she, you form. If I want to say you went or you were, I could say fue. For you all went, or you all were, I could say fueron, which is the plural version. So by remembering the fui and fue words, you can mentally link them to the plural versions to remember them. So, using the preterite, I can narrate a series of events such as sonó el teléfono, the phone rang. Contesté, I answered. If I wanted to say, I had to tell him, I can use the preterite and say, tuve que decírselo, which implies that I did. If I used the imperfect tense and said, tenía que decírselo, then I'm just describing that I had to tell him. If I wanted to say a sentence with two events, one that is a background and one is a completed event, then I would use the imperfect as the background action, for example, Mientras yo leía el periódico, sonó el teléfono. While I was reading the newspaper, the phone rang. I use the imperfect tense for the reading of the newspaper because I am just describing what happened. I may have continued reading and ignored the telephone. The ringing is an event with a start and an end, so I use the preterite. Anyway, that's enough for one video. Thank you for watching.